Welcome to uh, Europe PCR 2024. My name is Didier Cheche, and I have the great privilege today to uh, welcome Raj Makar from uh, Cedar Sinai in the USA. And we're going to discuss, uh, Raj, uh, together the issue of biker speed aortic valves because it's a very complex uh, group of patients. We have got in the past a lot of information about understanding who is a good candidate in terms of patient selection. Uh, what is your main message when it comes to understanding the complexity of biker speed phenotype and selecting the appropriate patients for a transcaptor outil valve implantation or replacement? Hi Didier. So, you know, the term that we use is CT phenotyping of bicuspid. Mm -hmm. And essentially what we are looking at is the degree of calcification of the aortic valve leaflets, whether or not there is RAFE. So I think that in conjunction with the aortopathy, if there is any, and the extent of it, uh, are the most important features in terms of deciding. And of course, as we choose our patients, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we, we leave out the toughest. So for example, type two uh, mm -hmm. bicuspid aortic stenosis, which is characterized by presence of two raphase, maybe not a very good, uh, cohort of patients that we actually want to enroll. Fortunately, they're not very common. Um, and also the other aspects of anatomy, such as the, uh, the takeoff of the coronary arteries and the size of sinuses, etc., are important in determining the eligibility for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. So thank you for this uh, very insightful uh, description of the, uh, the characteristics that we have to consider. Uh, apart from the, um, alongside the data that we uh, had in the past from the Bivolutex registry, the, the STS-TVT database, the Loris Biker Speed registry, we have now uh, a, a quite important piece of information coming from the Notion 2 trial. Uh, Notion 2 was a trial that randomized the younger, lower risk patients to TAVI against surgery, and there was quite a significant proportion of biker speed patients. Uh, you've seen the results. Uh, what do you? What are the main information that you take out of from this trial? Yes. So, so did you? We've long complained that there is no randomized clinical trial in bicuspid. I think we don't have a fully dedicated trial for bicuspid aortic stenosis, but nonetheless, the Notion 2 trial did not exclude the bicuspids. And a quarter of patients, so there were about 200 patients in each, and about a quarter of those patients were actually bicuspid. So about a total of about 100 patients, 15 each group. And I think we were a little bit humbled. Mm -hmm. The outcomes in patients who had bicuspid uh, morphology were not all that good. I think the primary endpoint of death and stroke and um, you know heart failure related uh, rehospitalization was actually higher, significantly higher. Um, though the sample size is small, and when you look at the confidence intervals, they actually sort of crossed. So, you know, uh, I think that these. Even though the sample size was small, this is a little bit of cause of concern. So this is not a strikeout against TAVR, but I think nonetheless tells us that as we plan other studies, mm. we must be careful in how we select our patients with bicuspid aortic valve anatomy for TAVR. So I think, um, and whether or not we should be using, for example, embolic protection, you know, the stroke yeah. rates seem to be a little bit higher. So I think as we plan, the future randomized clinical trials, and you are involved, uh, you know, in an important fashion in the uh, NABGATE trial. I, I think we will be learning and applying the lessons, or we will be applying the lessons that we've learned uh, from the notion to study. So thank you, very, very important. Um, I'm always interested in the technical aspects of the procedure. You. Uh, uh, propose the use of systematic embolic protection devices. I think it makes sense, given the, uh, the stroke rate that we've observed in all the registries and uh, the trials. Uh, what about in the future? Because uh, recently has been uh, published and presented the, the, the results of the uh, shortcut pivotal trial, uh, leaflet modification therapy. Do you think that there could be room in the future for leaflet modification of the biker speed anatomy to bring it into more a triker speed configuration, so more uh, in favor of a, a, a TAVI or TAVA? Well, theoretically, it sounds very interesting, mm. right? To be able to um, 
create a laceration in the, in, in the leaflet alongside a calcified draft phase so that the valve can actually expand further. And of course, if you were to use a therapy like uh, a shortcut, uh, you would want to minimize all the risk uh, of embolization and therefore using uh, an embolic protection device would actually make sense. Uh, so yes, I think we'll have to study that, mm. you know, um, and, and find out, you know, what uh, you can do in terms of optimizing the deployment of these valves. So this could be the next step for bicuspid arteric valves. I think before that, uh, I'm very excited about the upcoming randomized clinical trials. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, um, the Navigate and as well as the Believer study that is also being planned in the United States yeah. and the Navigate, which is an international collaborative effort, uh, should hopefully, uh, you know, give us the data that we are actually craving for for yeah. the last uh, for the so last these years. these are going to be uh, randomization between uh, TAVI and surgery and That's do you think correct. that uh, given what we have uh, so what we saw with the uh, uh, smart trial that was a uh, quite big trial run, uh, comparing two type of devices in a specific population small annually uh, do you think that we could do the same is it needed to randomize to compare devices for bicuspid artery valves i think we don't have um, clear-cut idea, right? What is the device of choice, self-expanding or balloon expandable in bicuspid aortic stenosis? So I think it is of great interest to do a study like this. I would argue irrespective of the annular size, you know, in patients with bicuspid uh, aortic stenosis. There is limited data, for example, uh, from the ad hoc registry, where the outcomes seem to be similar. You know, there was a little bit more aortic regurgitation, mm and paravalvular leak with the self-expanding, but there was much more uh, patient prosthesis mismatch with the balloon expandable. But I think the randomized clinical trial and getting more information on what device uh, would be a good device is actually a very reasonable uh, clinical trial to do. So thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Raj. So it's always extremely insightful. I like this type of conversation that we have on a, on a regular basis, basis. So what I, I, I did learn today is that we still have to uh, understand more about the patient selection. Uh, you've uh, provided with all the features that we have to uh, check for. Uh, a randomized trial uh, is potentially needed just to better understand the, the clear outcomes because we have the notion too, but maybe with bigger cohorts, we're going to see more meaningful uh, results. And Stavi against surgery, but potentially as well uh, device against device, just to be able to tailor the device to the anatomy of the patient. So thank you very much for uh, sharing this uh, discussion with me.